Beyond the Badge is brought to you by the Dyna Crime Prevention Fund. Technological advances in the medical field can range from increasing convenience to saving lives. The Lucas II definitely falls into the latter. It is a battery-operated automated CPR device that is an improvement over its compressed air-powered predecessor. In a situation where seconds matter, the more compact Lucas II is faster and easier to deploy. It can perform an entire session of CPR automatically, freeing up key emergency personnel to perform other life-saving tasks. Let's join Officer Aaron White and Firefighter Paramedic Pete Knabley for a demonstration of this device in our How's It Work segment. Thank you, Brian. I'm out at Edina Fire Station number two today, and uh, we're here to learn a little bit about a device called the Lucas II. CPR is something that people are pretty familiar with, unfortunately, mostly from TV, but uh, also occasionally in real life medical situations. And this device is an improvement on that. To talk about that, I'm joined by firefighter paramedic Pete Knabley. Pete, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. So this is the Lucas II. Tell me about it. What is this thing? This is. This is an automatic compression device. Uh, it's a Lucas II. It's a second generation device. It's fully battery powered. It's much more compact than the previous one, which ran off compressed air. Uh, what this device does is it does automatic chest compressions for any patient who's in full cardiac arrest. Okay. That's something that we still rely on people to start for us before we can bring this device and get there. But in the past, we had to have a human doing compressions throughout sure. the entire call. At most, you'd get about 90 seconds to two minutes out of any average person, and then you'd have to switch them out, which is, you can imagine, is pretty labor intensive, especially through about a 30 minute. That's uh, kind of call. one of those myths, isn't it, of television that, you know, CPR is just this easy thing we do on all the medical shows it and is. everything like that. It's hard work. CPR is very hard work. Most of our patients that we have to do CPR on are not in the peak of health. They're very, very large sometimes, and it requires quite a bit of effort to be doing CPR on them. It also cracks a bunch of ribs. It requires a lot of effort pushing down. This device frees up those people to be doing other life-saving techniques on that patient. Sure. We're set up here with uh, kind of a simulation. Can you show us how the device works? Absolutely. Uh, the cool thing about this device is that it can be set up around someone doing CPR. Mm -hmm. So if one of us was doing chest compressions on this patient, sure. we can insert this device right through their arms, right around them, so there's no disruption of compressions. A backboard goes behind the patient's shoulders. Obviously our dummy here does not have arms, but you tuck it up right under the armpits of the patient. Mm -hmm. A neck strap goes around the neck of the patient. That helps center the device where we want the compressions to be in the middle of their chest. You turn the device on and this plunger comes and makes contact with the patient's chest. Once the device is set to the proper depth, you simply turn it on. As you can see, the compressions are they are the correct interval, the correct time, the correct depth. The device never gets tired. And a lot more space to work now with the patient. Yeah, this, uh, they, they put some very unique uh, inventions on here. They have straps here that we can put the patient's wrists into. It helps keep the patient nice and compact because obviously we have to extricate that patient then from the environment they're in mm -hmm. through small doorways up and down stairs. Uh, it allows us to do IVs on the patient's arms and keep those IVs free flowing instead of having to belt their arms to their sides or something like sure. that. One other very nice feature about this device is the way it does CPR, the rest of the body stays relatively motionless. Mm -hmm. We can intubate a patient, we can do intraosseous uh, medications through the legs of the patient while this device is running. Sure. In the past, a lot of time, we'd have to stop the human compressions in order to put a, uh, an airway into the yeah. patient. Now we can, can keep the compressions going as we're doing those skills. Well, it seems like a relatively simple task. Mm -hmm. um, this is not only doing it better, but you're freeing those hands. You mentioned that, you know, you're yeah. getting them out of the way to do something maybe that's uh, more important in that life saving. Yep, it makes a very big difference. Let's close with this thought though. We, we don't want to um, diminish the value of training for everybody out there, do we? We do not. Um, this device does a great job, but it has to be brought by us on the ambulance, and that patient, the entire time they're waiting for this device to get there, is not breathing and their blood is not circulating. So what's very, very important for us to know, for us to recognize and for the public to know is uh, early compressions are very vital for that patient having no neurological deficits. As technology evolves, it's a wonderful thing, but uh, important, we got to still make those 911 calls, and uh, the more people trained in the community, the better. Absolutely. So, thanks for your time today, Pete. That's a great demonstration. Thanks for having me.
Pete Knabley, a paramedic firefighter with the Edina Fire Department. And we'll return to you in the studio, Brian. Thank you, Aaron.